Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 13 in Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios Playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to copy last modified files from multiple ADLS folders into another folder using ADF pipeline. So let's see our requirement in details. So basically inside our Azure Data Lake storage, we have multiple folders or containers which contains multiple files. So out of those folders, we are only concerned about two folders. One is demo and the other one is demo FOL, that is demo folder, okay. So inside each of these folders, there are multiple files and each of these files have been modified in different dates, okay. So as you can see in the image. But we want to fetch out only the last modified file. As you can see, uh, this is the one in demo container which is the most recently modified. So we need to fetch out this file name and we need to uh, copy this file into another uh, folder, okay. Similarly, from this demo uh, FOL, we need to find out the mostly, uh, most recently modified file which is uh, folder content.csv in this case and we need to load it into another uh, folder, okay. In the same folder basically where accessory sales.csv will be copied, okay. So let's see how to do that uh, using ADF pipeline. So this requirement is similar to our previous video but the only thing is in previous video we had uh, copied only uh, from one folder. We had copied the most recently modified file from one folder but in this video we are doing the same thing for multiple folders, okay. So let's see how to do that using ADF pipeline. So let me go to Azure portal. So as you can see inside my Azure data lake storage we have multiple folders and out of which this demo is having five files and demo folder is having six files, okay. So out of which we need only the last modified file to be copied into a new folder, okay. So let me go to ADF portal and here let me start creating a new pipeline. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the names of all the folders present in my Azure Data Lake storage. So to do that let me use get metadata activity and let me create a data set pointing to my Azure Data Lake storage Gen 2, okay. So let me choose any of the formats because I am not going to select any file and in the file path also I am not selecting anything so that it won't point to any specific folder, okay. So I am not selecting any folder and let me click on OK and in this field list let me select child items. So if we run this it should give us all the folder names present in my ADLS. So let me debug it. So let's wait. Yeah, so get metadata activity execution is completed. Now if we see the output, you can see child items is the array which is holding all the folder names present in our ADLS account, okay. Now we are only concerned to check the last modified files from demo and demo folder, okay. So let me use filter activity to filter out only those those two files, okay, oh, sorry, those two folders. So let me connect these two activities and in the filter item, we need to use output of get metadata activity. So let me use uh, output dot child items property because child item is the property which is holding all the folder names, okay. And in the condition, what we are going to write is, uh, we are going to check if the folder name contains demo as the part of this string, then we are only filtering out that particular folder. So let me use contains function here and we are going to check items item dot name because this is the items and we are concerned about item dot name is having demo as the part of its folder name or not, okay. So let me use item dot name, okay and it should have demo as the substring, okay. So let me debug it, yeah. So the execution is completed. Now if we check the filter activity output, you can see out of nine folders, we are getting only two filtered uh, output, okay. So you can see one is demo and the other one is demo folder, okay. So we are good here. Now what we need to do is we need to iterate through the output of this filter activity. So to do that, let me use for each activity, 
okay, which is used for iterating through the array. Okay. So, inside the items, I am going to use the output of filter activity as the item in uh, for each. Okay. So, let me use uh, filter activity output and then value is the property which is holding all the folder names uh, from which we need to derive the last modified file. So, let me use value here. Okay. So, we are iterating through value array now. And inside this for each, what we want to do is, we want to get the file names present in those two folders. Okay. So, to do that, we can use get metadata activity to get the file names and then we should be able to iterate through those file names. right? So, if you observe, we cannot use for each inside another for each. Okay. So, as a workaround, what we will do is, we will create another child pipeline and we will try to call that pipeline inside this for each. Okay. So, to call any pipeline, we can use this execute pipeline activity. Okay. So, here we need to select the pipeline that we want to call inside this for each. Okay. So, I am not going to select any existing pipeline, I am going to create a new one. So, this pipeline will be acting as our child pipeline. Okay. And inside this pipeline, we, we are going to create exactly same pipeline that we have created in our previous video. Okay. So, please go through that video as well to understand the concept better. So, the first thing that we need to do is, we need to get the uh, folder names from the previous pipeline that is the parent pipeline. Okay. So, we need to get these two folder names dynamically. Okay. So, to do that, I am going to create parameter inside the child pipeline named as folder name. Okay. And if we go back to uh, the parent pipeline, you can see in the execution execute pipeline activity, this parameter section has got added automatically. So, we need to provide the folder names dynamically, so that it will take each of these folders one by one. Okay. So, uh, we need to use items item dot name. Okay. Because we are treating value array as the items in for each. Okay. As you can see here. So, value is the array which we are treating as items. So, if we give item dot name which means we are going to get each of the folder names in each of the iterations. Okay. So, let me use item dot name. Okay. Now, let me go back to child pipeline. And now here we will follow the same steps that we have already covered in previous video. So, in the variables, I am going to create two variables. One will be holding latest file name and the other one will be holding reference date time value. Okay. So, here I am going to use a default value called 1900-0101. Okay. And for hours, minutes and seconds, I am using 0000, 00, 00, 00 and 00. zero. Okay. Now, we need to get the list of all the file names present in each of the folders. So, to do that, let me use get metadata activity again. And here, we will create a parameterized data set, which will be pointing to each of the folders dynamically. Okay. So, let me create the data set. Let me use gen2, ADLS gen2 and I am using CSV. I can use any of the format because I am pointing to folder now. So, right now, I am not going to hard code anything. I am going to create a parameter for the folder name. Okay. And let me use the same in this connection tab. And to pass the value, we will use this parameter that we have created. Because we are getting the folder names from the previous pipeline that is parent pipeline into this uh, parameter that is uh, par pipeline parameter of the child pipeline. Okay. So, let me use the same here. So, our data set is parameterized and now in this field list, let me use child items to get the file names present in the folders. Okay. So, now let me go back to the parent pipeline and let me hit on debug. Okay. So, it has started the execution. Let us wait. So, you can see the first get metadata activity is giving us all the folder names present in our ADLS. Then we are filtering out only two folders and we are iterating through these two folders and then we are getting file names present in those two folders. Okay. So, you can see this is for one of the folders, 
So, we are getting the file names present in demo folder and then the second uh, execute pipeline will run for uh, the another folder. Okay. So, as you can see it is giving us another list of files. Okay. Now, we need to iterate through each of these files and we need to get the last modified date time of each of these files. Okay. So, to do that let me use for each inside this child pipeline. Okay. So, let me connect these two and here I will give the output of get metadata as the item in for each. Okay. Inside this what we will do is to get the last modified date time we need to use again get metadata activity. Okay. And this time we will create a new data set that will be parameterized for folder name as well as uh, file name. Okay. So, let me create this data set. Uh, I am not going to hard code anything. Let me reopen it and let me create two parameters. One is folder name that will again get the value from pipeline uh, parameter and uh, sorry another one is, is file name. Okay. Now, let me use the same here. Let me use folder name in the folder and in the file name let me use file name parameter. Okay. Let me go back and in the values for the folder name let me give the pipeline parameter and for the file name we need to give item dot name right because here as you can see uh, the get metadata is giving us the file names in this child item property which is um, being treated as items and item dot name will hold the file name one by one. Okay. So, let me use item dot name and then we are going to use two properties here. Uh, one is item name which will give us the file name and we are going to use last modified. This will give us the date time on which the file was modified. Okay. So, let us go back to the parent pipeline and let us run the pipeline till this point. Yeah. So, the pipeline is currently running. It has completed for one folder. Let me go to this run id and you can see for demo uh, it is giving us all the file names and then inside this for each we are getting the file name as well as last modified date time for each of those files present in this folder. Okay. Similarly, it will be running for another folder. So, let me click on this run id and it will give us the uh, item name that is file name and then last modified for the second folder. Okay. So, now we are good till this point. So, now our aim is to get the most recently modified file for each of those folders. So, to do that as we have done in our previous video we will use if activity and here we will specify the condition that if the output of this get metadata activity that is holding the last modified date time if that is greater than the reference date time that we are using here if that is greater then we will reassign the value uh, into this variable. Okay. So, basically we have assigned the reference date time value to 1900 right. Okay. Now, suppose for the first iteration this is the output of get metadata activity the inner get metadata activity will return this value. Okay. So, inside if condition we will uh, we will compare these two values and if this value is greater than this value then we will update this reference date time to this value. Okay. Now, this will be the our reference date time value. Similarly, for next iteration this is the value which it will compare with the reference date time. If this value is greater then it will be updated to this value. Okay. So, this is the approach we are going to follow. So, inside this if condition let me write the expression to compare output of this get metadata and the reference variable that we have. So, let me go to functions and we have something called greater function. Okay. So, let me use this and we need to compare output of this get metadata that means get metadata 2 with the reference variable. Okay. So, let me go down and let me check for get metadata 2 uh, last modified. Yeah. So, this value we have to compare it with the reference date time variable. Okay. If the output of get metadata uh, is greater than the reference date time then we need to update the uh, variable value to the output of get metadata. Okay. So, let me change or update uh, reference date time to this value that is get metadata to 
output dot last modified and also we will update the latest file. So, latest file value we will update it with git metadata to dot item name ok. Now, in both the variables we will get the latest file modified time and latest file name ok. So, once we will have the correct value into the variables what we are going to do is we are going to copy that latest file into another folder. So, let me use this copy activity and in the source I am going to use the same parameterized data set that we have created uh, that is parameterized for folder name and file name as well. So, let me use that ok and here we will pass the folder name dynamically from the pipeline parameter and similarly file name is nothing but the latest file variable ok and in the sync let me create a data set for a new folder ok. So, here let me create a new folder. So, we do not have something called output folder. So, let me give the name as output folder and for the file name again we have to create the parameter. Let me remove this import schema. Let me reopen uh, this data set and let me create parameter called file name and let me use that parameter here and let me go back and let me provide the file name as latest file coming from the variable ok. So, we are good let me go back to the pipeline parent pipeline and let me hit on debug. Let me revise it thoroughly. So, the first get metadata is giving us all the folder names present in our ADLS then we are filtering out only two folders that is demo and demo folder and then uh, for each of those folders we are getting the file names first ok we are getting the file names and we are iterating through each of these files and we are getting the last modified date time value and the file name as well ok. Now, if this value is greater than the reference date time then we are setting the latest file variable value to this one, this one and reference date time variable value to this one ok. Similarly, the comparison will happen for all the uh, files and finally, we will get the most recently modified uh, file name ok and the same will be copied to the new folder called uh, output folder ok. So, let me go to this uh, ADLS and let me refresh it. So, you can see output folder has been recently created and if I open this. So, for one uh, folder it has been uh, the pipeline execution is completed and it has copied the uh, most recently modified file if we compare it with the expected output you can see for demo container we had to uh, get accessories sales dot csv which is what we are getting ok. Let me go to the parent pipeline and let me see if execution is completed for second folder or not. So, yeah it is also completed let me go to pipeline run id yeah. So, all the activities are successfully completed. So, let me hit on refresh. So, you can see folder content dot csv got copied from the second folder. So, let me check the expected output. So, you can see this is what the file name is for the second folder folder content dot csv. So, we have successfully achieved this requirement. I hope you like the content. Please like the video and please subscribe to my channel if you have not done it yet. Thank you. Please stay tuned.